when you hear people talk about the dangers of political Islam, wittingly or not, they're thinking of the Muslim Brotherhood. This is the largest organized political movement in Egypt, probably the most important Islamic political party in the world. It was founded in 1928 with its slogan, Islam is the solution. It promises to make the Quran and its teachings the sole reference point for ordering the life of the Muslim family, individual, community, and state. It has officially been against violence, but it has had breakaway groups and members who have advocated and practiced jihad. It has been banned as a political party in Egypt for decades, a ban that was lifted only this year in the wake of Egypt's democratic revolution. But even if it is nonviolent, how would it impose its religious views on Egypt? Is Islam compatible with democracy? When I was in Cairo recently, I sat down with one of the Muslim Brotherhood's senior leaders, who also serves as the group's spokesman, Esam El Arian. He is generally regarded as the moderate face of the Brotherhood. And many Egyptian secularists and liberals told me that they were worried that this was the message that the Brotherhood wanted to get out publicly, but that it might harbor more radical intentions privately. We'll follow that carefully, but for now, a rare opportunity to hear from the Brotherhood itself. Dr. El Arian, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming to A New Egypt. Um, you are the face of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, you are the spokesman. Uh, you are very senior in the organization. So let's start by just introducing you to, the, to my viewers. Uh, what do you do? I'm a physician, earning my life from hematologist and uh, as laboratory man. So you're a hematologist? Yeah, I am, I'm still hematologist and lab. And yet you are a senior figure in the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Brotherhood has been banned for many, many years until recently, of course. Did you spend any time in jail? I spent about seven years, 10 months in jail. I was charged by managing and affiliating to Muslim Brotherhood, which was uh, an uh, outlawed organization. So it was just the fact that you belong to the Muslim Brotherhood or that you managed? Only. No charges of any activities except political, social, and educational activities. Now, you know that many people in the Western world particularly uh, think of the Muslim Brotherhood as an organization that is, uh, believes in political Islam or violence or extremism or jihad. Um, what do you say to people like that? What, what? I say to them, you must go to Islam itself to understand Islam. Islam is Islam. And I think Islam is a very peaceful religion. It's a way of life. It is uh, cooperating with all others, respecting all religions, respecting humanity, uh, respecting peace and uh, prosperity, working for peace in the world. What did you think of the, of the assassination of Osama bin Laden? We, as Muslim Brotherhood, condemned violence from any side. We were waiting for a, a trial for Osama bin Laden because we want to know the truth about everything which uh, was uh, directed, charged by Osama bin Laden himself. And also, we are against any intervention mainly by force, by violence, which uh, uh, violates the sovereignty of any country, especially Pakistan. And we ask it in our statement after killing Osama bin Laden that it is the time to withdraw troops from Afghanistan after destroying the country and also from Iraq. Mr. Obama promised his uh, voters, not us, that he is going to end such war, which uh, was uh, killing more than whom killed in 11 September. I may be now, millions were killed. Do you think terrorism is ever justified? Nobody can justify terrorism at all. Killing innocent people is condemned in all religions, in any law. Do you believe that a woman is worth half a man? Because the Sharia says a woman's testimony counts as half, a woman would inherit half as much as a man. A man can divorce a woman, but a woman cannot divorce a man. But Sharia also said woman is equal to man. 
And these cases you mentioned must be explained and understood in the whole context of the Sharia. Women in some cases inherit more than men. And women in, such ca in some cases may, may have equal to the men. And in, such, in, many, in some cases can have half of the men. It depends in every case. One of the questions that lots of people have, and this is not just Westerners, this is Egyptians who tell me, ask him, what does he want to do? What do the, does the Muslim Brotherhood want to do if they do achieve power, if they get power in Egypt? What is their vision for Egypt? And so what would you change? Would you like to see stricter interpretation of Sharia? Would you like to see uh, women given subordinate right, uh, rule, uh, roles? What is it that your vision is? I would like those Egyptian people to ask me face to face, not via media. And we are... You can't talk to 18 million questions. Egyptians, so we I'm can, going to do can, it for you. Because uh, not all Egyptians uh, uh, watch uh, CNN, <laughs> so they are facing us everywhere. And first of all, we are not going to catch power in Egypt. But what would you try to... Uh, what, what would you change about Egypt today? We are going to have independent, democratic, civil country. This is our main goal now. And I think this is gaining a very national consensus between all Egyptians. The people are the main source of authority. The only source of authority is the people themselves. So would you support a, the, the kind of civil law that Egypt has now rather than a religious law? In Islam, you don't have a religious law. In Islam, you have a civil law. Civil law means that the people have the decision in their parliament after keeping in mind the reference of Sharia, reference of Islam. Would non-Muslims have the same rights as Muslims? Non-Muslims, even infidels, in an Islamic state or civil state but with a background of reference of Islam, Sharia, have equal rights and equal duties. The kind of program you're presenting uh, sounds very moderate, sounds very modern. Why do you think people are still so suspicious? And I say again, in Egypt, lots of people tell me their intentions are not fully democratic. Because the people are facing the unknown. Unknown is democracy, not Muslim brothers. Unknown is state of law, not Muslim brothers. The whole chance now, it is the first time for them to have the power by themselves and to elect a parliament by themselves and to appoint a president by themselves. This is the first time for both since two centuries. So they are facing unknown. Suspicious is not towards us only. It is towards everything. What is the action you want to see from President Obama? We ask it stop supporting dictatorships, spot neglecting the Palestinian rights, uh, stop the war on terrorism which damaged the Islamic world, and unfortunately, he never done so. Esam El Arian, thank you very much. Thank you. And we will be back. We must stand with those who want to build Pakistan. Providing this assistance is not only the right thing to do, but we believe it is essential to global security and the security of the United States. The Lead is brought to you by Charles Schwab.